Well, we're at the Edelbrock display, and with me is Kerry Redman, and he's a national sales manager. And uh, Kerry, why is it so important today to think about uh, having the right intake manifold? You know, for for centuries, it seems like we've had uh, upgraded intake manifolds to increase the performance on all types of vehicles, especially hot rods and things. We all remember that. But I think it's more important today to think about volumetric efficiency and how fuel and air flows. So tell us a little bit more about that and maybe start right where it began. Right, absolutely. Thank you, Jim. Uh, intake manifolds are extremely important for airflow and volumetric efficiency, just as you had stated. Uh, since 1937, Edelbrock has been focusing on intake manifolds. That's really our core competency. Uh, it increases runner volume, it adds plenum depth, and it allows for good air fuel atomization to get into the engine. Uh, in 1937, Vic actually started with this intake right here for the slingshot for the flathead forward. Uh, that was really the founding basis for the company itself. Yeah, I think we all remember seeing some old uh, uh, footage on that, and certainly everybody knows the history of uh, Vic Edelbrock. Um, so, what comes next? Well, the next step really is uh, determining what you're doing with the vehicle that you're working on. So if it's a street car, if it's a race car, or if it's a, a mud bog truck, whatever it may be, it just depends on what you're doing with that. And we offer a multitude of different levels from mild to wild, and uh, we'll go through those right now. As we continue on with our product selection, I want to show you a couple of items that uh, we use for classifying different intake manifolds. This particular intake manifold is more of a street style manifold. So if you're daily driving the units and you're looking for fuel economy or you're looking for a little bit more horsepower, a little more low end torque, that's where this style of intake comes in. This is actually what we call a dual plane manifold. So it actually has two levels to the intake manifold. So you have one level that feeds four cylinders and you have another level that feeds the other four cylinders. That way it allows the engine to have both mid range and top end as far as horsepower is concerned. And just like any intake manifold or any engine in general, you want to match the right components together. So just for an example, if you were a professional athlete, a football player, for example, you wouldn't put on all your, uh, your pads and all your gear and then put on uh, sneakers or boat shoes to go play on the turf. You'd actually have cleats to go with it. Same goes with the engine side of things, where you want to have the right cylinder heads and the right camshaft matched to your intake manifold. Taking that into consideration, we'll go into our next level which is what we call our air gap manifold. And what that is, is it's still a dual plane style manifold, but it's slightly higher. And what that height does is give you a higher RPM base. So with that higher RPM base then, you also get more horsepower at the big end, but you don't sacrifice uh, your low end torque like you would with uh, some applications or if you were going with a single plane manifold. Uh, then we go into our race side of things with our uh, single plane manifold because that's designed for high RPM, 3,500 to 8,500 RPM. Uh, typical streetcars down low, they, they're driving all the time down low, stop sign to stop sign, grocery getting, what have you. Where a race car, that lives its life in 3,500 to 8,500 RPM. So that's where we go into our sing single plane intake manifolds here. Then when you get into the really big cubic inch stuff, we also have what we call our Super Victor intakes, and we'll go over those here in a second. All right. So uh, for some of you race guys, let me remember that uh, to... Uh, change the, uh, the the range, your torque range. Remember, sometimes you raise and lower the injector stack. That's right. That's and right. so engineering intake manifolds for carbureted uh, vehicles is basically the same idea, isn't it? Yes, that is the same idea. Uh, when you look at a fuel injection side of things, that's why you'll see a lot of fuel injected manifolds have really long runners, very similar to uh, a single plane manifold, because you want that long runner for torque when you're dealing with fuel injection. You're only flowing air through the manifold. Wow, Gary, look at the height on that. Tell us more about this. This is our Super Victor intake manifold. This is for the high RPM, high horsepower, high competition guys that are out there. We designed this specifically for the 565 cubic inch motors and above. So we're talking guys that are making 1,000 horsepower on motor, 1,100 horsepower. This is the manifold that they're running for that situation. Really deep plenum vol volume. Uh, you have really long runners. We have uh, very thin dividers on the inside here to help the air flow through. Literally, it gives a straight shot from the carburetor right to the intake valve to give you the most horsepower possible. Wow, that's just fantastic. And you know, like I said before, uh, it seems like we've been uh, looking at intake manifolds for, for ages, but it's more important now than ever before to choose the right intake manifold for the application, for the results that you're trying to achieve. And I don't think anybody can do this better than Edelbrock. What do you think? I would agree with you completely. <laughs>